Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for the second Morsels Talk. Um, our first one was really fun, and it was a success, so we're excited to do this one. Um, today we have Lillian Para giving the talk, and she is an undergraduate in ecology and evolutionary biology at UT. And today um, she'll be talking about the, well, you can see on the screen, changes in anti-predator defense in tree swallows due to high temperatures. And she did this work over the summer in uh, Elizabeth Derryberry's lab. So I will let her take it away. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Lillian, um, like Lily said. And yeah, today I'm going to be talking to you about how um, anti-predator behaviors in tree swallows um, change with high temperatures. Um, so what do we know? Well, um, we know that rising global temperatures and heat waves represent a threat to many animal populations. And adaptive responses to high heat, such as moving to a cooler microclimate or planting, um, can reduce the time and energy invested into parental care. And some things we also know about tree swallows is that they're cavity nesters, um, meaning they'll lay their nest in both natural and artificial cavities. And you can see that here in our nest boxes from our field site. Um, they're also synchronous breeders, meaning that they kind of breed in a wave. And in Tennessee, we have two waves of breeding, whereas in the North, um, they only have one. And then they're also highly aggressive, um, which is really important for our study because it means that they'll defend not only their own nest, um, but the neighboring nest as well. Um, and so here's just a distribution of tree swallows. Um, we can see that Tennessee is on the leading edge of that breeding season, um, kind of where the temperatures are hotter. And what do we not know? So a key component of parental care is defending your offspring against predators, um, but we don't really know how these anti-predator behaviors um, in songbirds change with ambient temperatures, particularly in tree swallows. And so that led us to ask the question, how do anti-predator behaviors vary with ambient temperature in tree swallows. And so from this question, we hypothesize that higher ambient temperatures would result in decreased defensive activity, um, including co both calls and behaviors in response to a stimulated nest predator due to heat stress. Um, so how do we test this? Well, we conducted our study at our field site here in Knoxville and the field site borders a busy highway, also known as Alcohol Highway, and a river. Um, and it's split into five separate areas. But for the purpose of our study, these areas aren't so important. It's just the general area. And then we conducted this study in what you want to think of as like a three-part system. So the first part was we approached the nest box and we attached this um, fake crow um, to the box. And that was our stimulus um, or our, like predator for, per se, um, and then we timed how long it took the first bird to react to the crow. Then the second part was after that had happened, we timed for five minutes um, and we recorded the calls that the tree swallows gave, their behaviors, and the number of the tree swallows defending every 30 seconds. Then the third part was we approached the box again and we removed the crow um, and we timed the least for the female to come back to the nest box and to incubate. And so here's just a visual of that setup. You can see Maya here um, with the clipboard and her phone. And then we have the microphone here near the crow, which you can see is attached um, with a wire. Um, and each box was run um, twice, so in repeated measures um, on hot and cold days. And then we also ran this in the early breeding season and the late breeding season. So going back to what I was talking about, those two waves of breeding, that's kind of when we ran them. And overall, the later season had hotter temperatures. And so, yeah, we had 36 nests that we nest boxes that we ran in the early season, um, and then we had 14 in the late season. And as for the specific the behaviors that we were reporting, um, there's two main behaviors. There's a dive, which is this V-shaped flight path. Um, in it, the tree swallows will make this ticking noises with this rasp at the bottom of the flight path sometimes. And then there's also an approach, which is a more U-shaped flight path. And it's 
typically less aggressive. And then the true swallows will also make contact with the contact with the crow, um, but it wasn't frequent enough for us to measure that. And here's just a visual of that diving again. You can see the tree swallows coming in at a pretty sharp angle to the crow, and then it's actually grappling at the crow. So in the last picture, it's actually making contact with it, which is pretty cool. And then as for the calls that we recorded, there are again three types of calls. You have a shriek, which is kind of your alarm call, and it alerts all the neighboring tree swallows of the predator in the area. Then you have a tick, which is this kind of repetitive clicking noise um, that's directed at the predator, and it's kind of a warning call, kind of telling it to be approaching. And then the rasp, which is this really harsh, aggressive noise um, that's at the predator, and it's basically telling them, get out of here, like, leave this nest box. Um, and so just a comparison of our spectrograms versus the literature, you can see that these call types look really similar. Um, and yeah. And so currently I'm working on scoring these R calls um, using an R package called Monitor. Um, and this will allow me to use templates of each of these three call types to count the number of each per recording. And I wanna note that I've also put a high pass filter over all of the recordings um, to kind of reduce that noise pollution from the highway and the river that I was talking about earlier, and also planes. So what did we find? Well, looking at the behaviors first, I just want to say first off that I didn't run these analysis, the grad students did. Um, however, I do know that we ran an ANOVA type 3 test, um, and we found that none of our plots were significant. However, we did see general trends in the early breeding season um, that align with our predict predictions. So um, we can see that, like we predicted in the early season, there seems to be less offensive activity when it gets hotter. So looking at these approaches in the early breeding season, when it's hot, there is less activity. But then when we move to the late season, um, this trend has gone away or reversed. And again, we can see this trend repeat with the number of dives. There's a slight decrease in defensive activity, and then there's no difference in the late season. And again, this pattern kind of repeats for the latency of the, for the first bird to react to the crow on the box. So in the early breeding season, they're reacting just barely slower when it's hotter. But then when you get to the late season, they've actually gotten used to the temperature and they're reacting faster when it's hotter. And similar to that one, there's no difference in the number of defenders in the early season. But then when we get to the late season, um, there are more birds that are attacking when it's hotter, suggesting that they've gotten used to it again. And then another thing to note is that um, changes in temperature don't seem to affect the latency for the female to incubate after the stimulus was removed um, in both the early breeding season and the late breeding season. So there doesn't seem to be a connection with temperature and latency to incubate. And then what did we find for the calls? Well, since I'm doing the analysis right now, our predicted results are that all three call types will um, decrease as temperatures increase, um, again, because of that heat stress. And we also predict that um, the number of calls in the early season in those hotter trials is going to be um, less than in, or sorry, the number of calls in the late season is going to be less than in the early season. And now for the discussion. So going back to our temperature, our question, how do anti-predator behaviors vary with air te ambient temperature in tree swallows? Um, like I mentioned before, uh, defensive behaviors dive and approaches with increased air temperature in the early season. However, in the late season, this trend reversed or disappeared completely. Um, and these differences um, between the early season and the late season suggest acclimation or acclimatization to seasonal temperatures um, and that it may affect nest events. And so acclimatization could help alleviate the heat load and the fitness costs that we hypothesize were um, causing this. And looking forward, future studies 
um, should examine how high temperatures affect other parental care behaviors in tree swallows and in other songbirds. And we anticipate that this study provides a basis for future songbird defensive behavior studies. And I just want to thank Mael and Liz for help with this project and to all the box checkers and staff at the field site. And I want to say thank you to the NSF for funding my project and the ORF for all its support. And thanks to Mael for the pictures and Amy for helping me with the code. And thank you all for listening.